today we will study the economics of temperature now has how come economics is led to temperature studies or temperature is led to economic studies well let me explain one of the biggest factors of production is what is called labor so the effort that i put in over here trying to teach you or for that matter the effort that you take to learn from me is also what we consider as labor so people who come to work they generally are all part of the labor or the workforce so human capital is generally uh, classified as a factor of production and that factor of production is normally classified as the labor factor of production so like you have land which is a factor of production for which you get rent you have capital for which you get interest for labor normally what you get is wages or earnings or salary for enterprise you get profit these are the factors of production of economics now at what point is the labor most productive it is at the point of 15 degree centigrade to 25 degree centigrade or what we know as temperate weather that labor is the most productive that is what it has found that is what research has evidenced over a long period of time yeah labor can be productive even at 30 degree centigrade it can be productive even at 40 degree centigrade at 45 degree centigrade but labor will not be as productive as it would be between 15 degree centigrade to 25 degree centigrade and if the temperature goes below 15 degree centigrade again labor will not be as productive as it would normally be in this temperature range Hmm. now i'll explain what happens what happens is because of climate change or whatever other reasons you may attribute global temperatures are rising all right and global temperatures are going up now why is labor most productive at this temperature because the human body also exists at this temperature in 36 degrees to 37 degrees centigrade generally if you take the temperature of somebody's mind brain head whatever it is normally in the range of about 37 degrees centigrade and if you if you take a body temperature generally it's between 36 to 37 degrees centigrade this is how the human body functions at this temperature what happens is when the human body is cooling off or there is perspiration the perspiration is very easily wicked away by the atmosphere at between this temperature you generally don't perspire too much and you are at your productive best now when you are at this temperature which is what the human body is generally at it is always at this temperature and it maintains this temperature for it to remain balanced and functional and whatever else then the human body is also very productive but one must understand that if the temperature rises by even 1 degree and becomes 38 degree centigrade you go through what the human body is calls a fever So you are in a feverish situation in case your body is generally fighting off some sort of an infection or something like that. If your body's temperature is thirty-eight degrees centigrade, it's just one degree centigrade that makes such a huge difference to the human body. Now I hope you understand why climate scientists, why environmentalists, why all the Greenpeace guys, why everybody in the world is very concerned about global temperatures. rising by 1.5 to 3 degree centigrade or so on the news the whatever the learning is not over yet what has happened now is that there is something called attribution science and in attribution science what we scientists can do today is that we can describe what will be the rise in temperature in any place due to climate events so we use attribution analysis across geographies to come and understand what is exactly going on and i'll tell you what makes a difference what makes a difference is that even if there is a slight decrease increase in temperature in the human body it is not able to function very well and if by chance that slight degree in temperature increase is also there in the environment surrounding the human body then it becomes that much more difficult for the human body to function 
it also makes a difference in terms of what geography your body is in why because the human body calls itself cools itself off with perspiration so suppose you are in a area like let us say mumbai or any coastal town in southeast asia or in wherever in india and the temperature the regular temperature has gone up by let us say 4 degrees so if your minimum temperature used to be 32 degrees centigrade earlier or whatever the maximum temperature used to be this and now it's gone up to say, let us say 37 or 38 degree centigrade there is a possibility that you might get a heat stroke because in mumbai the humidity is almost above 50 percent all the time and if the humidity is above 50 percent that means that the air in mumbai is incapable or rather does not take off over 50 percent or does not dry away over 50 percent of your perspiration and the moisture that your body is releasing to cool itself so it is possible number one that you will get a heat stroke the second thing that is the more debilitating thing is let us assume you don't get a heat stroke you drink a lot of water you are able to keep yourself hydrated you will not be able to function productively at a high level of productivity at these temperatures and that is the reason why when southeast asia they are going through these heat waves like for instance, if you look at, if you've done a Google on Southeast Asia heat waves, you are seeing that now they are looking at 43 degrees centigrade in Laos and 44 point some degree centigrade in Cambodia, 42 degrees centigrade in wherever, in Bangkok, Vietnam, all these places. And these are generally coastal places or closer to the coast where the humidity level is very high. So because of that, the labor factor of production isn't able to function at full throughput and how do you classify what is a heat wave so let us say you can say if you look at the classification of heat waves i'm sure that it's there somewhere like in india for instance the heat waves have arrived early so you will realize very quickly that if let me just see yeah so a heat wave is declared when the maximum temperature of any place reaches above 40 degrees centigrade now this is for the plains and 37 degree centigrade in coastal areas because at 37 degree centigrade or your regular body temperature also in coastal areas it is very difficult for that environment to dry away your perspiration due to humidity like I explained and at least 30 degree Celsius in hilly regions and the departure from normal is at least 4.5 degrees. So the departure from normal if it is above 4 degrees or 5 degrees that will also qualify as a heat wave meanwhile attribution science is now telling us that the degree of heat or the degree of heat wave will now go up to possibly an increase of maybe seven to eight degrees depending on which city you are in how much pollution there is what is the amount of concrete you have poured into the city so on and so forth now that would mean that if your city average temperature is 30 degrees centigrade or 30 degrees centigrade your because of these heat waves or whatever your average temperature will go up and become 35 or 37 degrees centigrade and that qualifies as good as a heat wave your production levels will drop because if you think that these extreme events are not going to have an impact of course it is going to have an impact and it is going to change the way we look at climate data in fact, attribution science is like saying that in the next 5 or 10 years, it becomes even more definitive and it will determine how much climate change impacts like literally everything in and around us. And they are saying that this occurrence of these heat waves will increase. There will be more and more heat waves. They are also saying some of the findings are that what used to occur once in 100 years will now occur every couple of years or every three years. So if there is a heat wave which used to occur once in every 100 years, the temperatures used to go soaring beyond 40 or whatever, now that will occur every 2 years or 3 years. If there was a climate event like a thunderstorm which was to occur once in 100 years, now it will occur every 2 or 3 years. So this is a very, very um, crazy but determined phenomena by climate science with attribution science, rapid attribution analysis, which is helping us understand that 
the economics of temperature is going to impact our growth numbers, our GDP numbers, etc. by maybe a factor of 2 or 3. So you could look at um, perhaps your GDP growth numbers going down by almost half. Because your labor cannot function, you cannot get out and go to work. And if you want to go to work also, you are stuck in a climate event, you are stuck because of hot weather, you are stuck because there is a thunderstorm, you are stuck because water is filling up everywhere, there are traffic jams. All of these are climate events which are going to take place and they are going to impact the economy. So in India for instance, if you see the heat wave came early and 13 people reportedly died from heat stroke before. 2016, the heat wave impacted almost all of the peninsula region of India and it was recorded first in Karnataka on March 3 and then it went further up and so on. So, this is the basically the economics of temperature and if we do not pay attention to this, if we do not look at it carefully, if we do not understand this carefully, then we will be kind of opening ourselves up to a catastrophe. So, the economics of temperature is very important, understand this very clearly that even 1 degree temperature for your body to handle as far as its increase in body temperature will lead you to a fever circumstance, will lead you to a situation where it is very difficult for the body to function. So, imagine if 1 degree temperature, 2 degree temperature, 3 degree temperature in the climate in general, what kind of an impact it will have on everybody, on everybody's bodies, on the weather, on the climate and so on. So, it is a domino effect which is going to take place and look up uh, attribution analysis, attribution analysis data will actually show you a very a lot of interesting math for those people who are the nerds amongst us, you should go and look it up and it will show you a lot of interesting data on what is going on. Their predictive models could be alarming but look at the models, you will understand it better, we will then understand better how to mitigate the impact of the economics of temperature. Thank you very much.